TV a spot where we move to Mondays. We've all been moved emotionally, and everybody will always consider yesterday one of those days where you tell your kids and talk to loved ones years from now about remember where you were when. The right words are never going to be enough. They're never going to be the perfect words, but we get a chance with some folks certainly who have been touched in different ways, not only by Kobe personally during his life, but also the basketball end of it is a Hall of Fame cast, as usual, Grant Hill, Candace Parker, and Isaiah Thomas. G, when you try a day later to assess what happened yesterday, you're left with what? Well, you know, yesterday was, was obviously devastating, and, and uh, I think in a way, getting up this morning, it, it hurt even more, you know? It's just, it, 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 it's hard even now, you know, 24 hours later to just sort of process all of this and make sense of, of what's happened. And, um, you know, it's, it's, there's obviously a, a great deal of sadness and grief and um, you, you, just a lot of questions. Um, you know, someone who, um, was a contemporary, someone who we all just sort of, you know, we, we took for granted that he was here and he was around the game and he loved the game. And it just, you know, as, as, as we talked earlier on the radio show, death puts perspective in focus. And, and so, um, you know, just, you, you, just the appreciation. Life is so fragile. Um, and you, as you said, you want to be around your loved ones. You want to hold them. You want to, um, you know, just you realize what's what's important. And so, but it's hard. I mean, it's hard to just, you know, it's hard to, to, to digest all of it and, and really understand sort of what's happening. And, um, you know, I, I, you can't really describe what you're feeling, but it's almost a feeling of, of, of just being numb. And, and so um, it's been good the last hour to be with you guys and to come here and be with family and you know Isaiah Candace and you know Kevin McHale Gary Payton all here in the studio and you know people that you work with and you've competed with and against um, but it's incredibly difficult and um, and it will be for a while and I said this to him personally but uh, if he's in the back watching it is not possible to, to imagine how difficult for B. Shaw that had to be yesterday, and, and he can't get enough praise, in my opinion, for, for what he did here on this set. We're all parents. Candace, we're going to talk basketball and celebrate the career of Kobe, but did you find yourself going to the parent and as a mother of daughter yourself, that aspect first? I think that's the toughest thing. Um... You know, we, we see Kobe and his career, but you saw a lot of that in his daughter. And um, the NBA had him for 20 years, and the WNBA has claimed him for the last four. Mm -hmm. um, so, Zeke, we always talk about so young. It was also just the beginning of this chapter of, of his life and the impact <clears throat> Kobe was having. I think, you know, we as a, as a basketball family, um, NBA, WNBA, we, we, don't, we don't break it down in terms of gender. Uh, and, and you can feel and see the, the heaviness of all of us that is still kind of going through this, trying to, trying to find the words trying to process it all, uh, trying to understand, and, and we as an NBA family trying to console each other and come together and just hug, love, and say it's okay. But at the same time, we understand as an NBA family, we, we have to console the public and, and let them know that it's okay. But then it comes back to the family and you say, okay, Jelly Bean Joe Bryant, the, the, the father who just lost a son. Uh, while Kobe was all of ours, I mean, this is all NBA family. And, and we have Joe Bryant who gave us Kobe and then Kobe teaching Gigi. When you talk about 
you know, the, the, the passing down and the tutelage and the mentorship of what I what we saw in Kobe's second epiphany, his his second birth, we saw we saw the father teaching the lessons that he had learned from his father, passing it on to his daughter. And all of us got a chance to really see what Joe Bryant was like as a father. Because you have to learn from somebody. Mm. And, 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 and I remember when, when I was, Mikhail and I was talking about it, I remember when I was thinking about drafting Kobe in Toronto. And, and Joe told me, this is what he said. He said, hey, he's been taught the right way. He's watched you, he's watched Bird, he's watched Matt. And we all have to find ways to be parents while also being celebrities yep. and athletes, right? And, and Kobe had just begun that second phase of life when we, re when we retire, where you really get to be the father of the mother. And Candace, your daughter saying, hey, I'm worried about you, mom, because you, you're traveling a lot. We, we have to deal with that. My daughter talking to me last night, she was all just messed up. Grant, I'm sure yours was, I mean, so all of us are dealing with this, but at the same time, this NBA nation family, we trying to hug each other, talk to each other, but we really don't know what to say to each other other than just, hey, you all right? And, and that's what we're doing. <coughs> are you, you all right? <clears throat> I think when people talk about Kobe Bryant, it was clear without even playing against him, you could, it jumped off the screen, the desire and the will to succeed at the highest level. The minute you accept being good, you've assured you'll never be great. Great wasn't enough. It was to me what stood out that he took that challenge upon himself. You could tell as a father to impart wisdom, to pay it forward to younger players and people. And that was just beginning. And 40 times you right there, a lot of times guarding him and uh, you the better of him some, him the better of you, a, a couple of 48 point nights. Um, <laughs> What was it about Kobe that was just different, Grant, when you looked in his eyes in moments like this on the floor? Yeah, no, it, it was um, it, it was incredible. Um, you know, I, I got to play against him at, at the different stages of, of both of our careers. And, you know, I remember him coming in as a rookie and uh, so young. Um, and then obviously there was a stretch there where I was, was hurt and then playing against him later on. Uh, he, and I've said this, I've said this here on this, you know, on, on this, this desk, I've said it when we've done things on the court, he was by far the hardest person for me to play against. And, um, you know, he was skilled, he was prepared, he never took a moment off. He was relentless in his attacking. And, you know, if the ball was on one side of the court, he was on the, you knew he was getting, getting back to it. And, you know, so it was the ultimate challenge. And his excellence, his commitment, his pursuit of perfection, it caused you to elevate your play, you know, because you knew as a competitor, you, you didn't want to get embarrassed. And even made tremendous plays out there on the court. So it, it was a, a, to, a total challenge. It was the ultimate challenge. And, um, you know, I'm just grateful that, that I had a chance to compete against him and to know him and, and to, you know, at different stages. And, and um, you know, and like I said, I've said he was the hardest person of all, and I played against all of them. He was the most difficult that I ever went against um, with all due respect to everyone else and could not figure him out and just had to, <laughs> had to throw everything at him <laughs> and defensively sometimes I just had to foul him just to send a message to him but nothing phased him and and I think he appreciated uh, when you really tried to compete with him particularly on the defensive end it was uh my brother's second stint in the NBA and he was with the Toronto Raptors and you know I was a proud sister I was at Tennessee and there'd be another number of times that my middle brother and myself would tune in to NBA TV Sports Center, and we'd always see Anthony with this crooked hand contesting <laughs> Kobe Bryant, contesting Dwayne Wade, contesting Grant, uh, contesting all the best two guards because that was his assignment. And all I would tell him was like, great effort. Like I saw the defensive intensity on that. There was yeah. nothing you could do about that. And he just always talked about how crafty he was. And 
I just remember a number of times he had a move and a counter move and you couldn't stop either. And it was just really fun to be able to see my brother out there competing with one of the best players to ever play the game of basketball. And it was fun to kind of dig at him on Sports Center when he would be in top 10 on the other side of us. <laughs> with, with the crooked hand. Oh yeah, with the crooked hand contesting, like good, good, good contest ant, but it wasn't, it wasn't quite enough. Yeah, go, I mean, go ahead, Zeke. To, to me, he was, he was the closest thing to Michael Jordan that we had ever seen. And when, and when, and when Michael was on top of his game, we never thought that we would see anything like him again. And Kobe came in with his walk, with his talk, with his moves. And, you know, everybody tried to emulate Jordan, but Jordan was at such a level that you couldn't really copy what he did. Kobe was so good that not only could he copy what Michael Jordan was doing, but he could also elevate it and make it a little bit better. So I remember I was coaching at the NBA All-Star Game, actually here in Atlanta. I think it was uh, Jordan's last All-Star Game. And we're, we're, down, we're down one. We take a timeout, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm diagramming a play for Jordan to get the last shot. And I know, I know where he's going to get it at. I'm going to put him on a box, and he's going to do his little thing, turn around and knock it down. Of course, we do it. Jordan scores. Next play, they call a timeout. Kobe gets fouled in the corner by Jermaine O'Neal contesting the shot. Now Kobe's going to the foul line. So I called him over. I said, hey, you know, this is Jordan's last all-star game. You know, it'd be nice to let him go out on top. He looked me dead in my eyes and goes, oh, he got to earn it. <laughs> <laughs> and walked to the line, and it wasn't none but net. Wop, wop, wop. We went in overtime and they beat us. <laughs> uh, I, I, I know we're out of time and why you know exactly what spot Michael would want to go to and where, having seen it. This is a spot certainly MJ didn't want to go. And just sincere emotional thoughts. I'm in shock over the tragic news of Kobe's and Gianna's passing. Words cannot describe the pain I'm feeling. I loved Kobe like a little brother to me. We used to talk often. I'll miss the conversations very much. He was a fierce competitor, one of the greats of the game and a creative force. Tag team partner through highs and lows, but as all brothers do, coming back around. Shaq said, there's no words to express the pain I'm going through with the tragedy of losing my niece, Gigi. My brother, Kobe, I love you and you'll be missed. My condolences go out to the Bryant family, the families of the other passengers on board. I'm sick right now as we remember those who lost their lives in this terrible tragedy. I think inevitably there's something that happens in all these situations where you want to honor the basketball and you know that's what he, I, I think about that, that bite where he talks about the first time he picked up a ball, which I'm sure is how the three of you all felt. And you're like, when's that right time? It, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. So we do some of both. And I think it's important to celebrate the, what he did for this game, what he meant just the way he jumped off the page and Zeke, I mean, when you're going to finish your final game and you're putting up this, I mean, with the amount of money these players are making, I'm thinking, well, he's got to sign up for another three years, right, Zeke? I mean, yeah. how about that finish? I, I mean, no, no one in the history of the game that I can remember has had a closeout performance like Kobe had. And, and when you look at, you know, what he's, what he's done for the game in terms of his, his legacy, uh, again, the, the generation that, that's grown up now, all they know is Kobe. Like, like we, knew, we knew Jordan or, or Kareem, or, but this generation, and it's Kobe. And, and by the way, he set a great example for the players and also for the fans in terms of what winning should be about, not settling and wanting to be the best but also putting together the, the work ethic behind it to be the best. And when you talk about the values and respecting the game, he was a guy that truly respected the game. And I'm, I'm going to tell you how much he respected the game. So I'm in New York as the president of, of the Knicks at that time, and I got a mid-level contract. That's all I got. I got a mid-level. And, and I get a call from Rob Palenka, and he says, Kobe wants to come see you about the mid-level. 
thinking about playing in New York. And I'm, I'm like, I, I'm like, Rob, I'm, I, I can't. I can't talk to Kobe about a mid-level contract. He goes, no, he wants to come see you because it's a matter of respect. He respects who you are, what you're trying to do. So he wants to give you the opportunity to talk to him. I say, well, I don't want to disrespect him by <laughs> right. offering him the mid-level. He goes, no, it, it's not about that with him. It's the way he thinks about the game and how he wants to honor tradition, so forth and so on. And that's who he was from day one until the day he left. Grant, I, I know late in your career, there was a possibility where maybe getting a chance to play with Kobe was there for you with the Lakers before the Clippers happened. Take us through what were conversations like at that point with Kobe Bryant about that opportunity. Yeah, no, it was <clears throat> summer of 2012, and, um, you know, the Lakers had just uh, traded for Dwight Howard. Steve Nash had left Phoenix and was going there, and, and I wanted to go, you know, and play with the Lakers. And, and we all kind of thought that team had a chance to do something special. And, and so I had some, some really good, you know, exchanges and conversations with, uh, with Kobe. And it, it was amazing, um, you know, his thirst for, for winning, um, and just the intensity on a phone call in July, I mean, it was it, it was something. It was it was it, it was amazing, and and it was almost like Game Seven, you know, just the intensity of <laughs> of, of that phone conversation. Now, you know, the, the the team didn't want me. I was about to be forty years old and pretty much washed up, but I, I was I was inspired. Like I was inspired by that conversation, and then I saw him um, with USA Basketball, and they were practicing in Vegas. And we continued to have, you know, dialogue and, you know, and, and, and then talking about family and talking about our kids and, you know, daughters. And um, but that that was one of the things and I, I don't pretend to have been extremely close with Kobe, but there was always a healthy respect. And certainly as we came in the league and had a lot of uh, different interactions off the court. But um, to me, like I wanted to go play with him and play in that environment. And uh, it, it didn't happen. But. Uh, I was just amazed. Like, it, it all kind of made sense. Like, this guy, you know, just, like, he, he still had that drive. He still had that desire. And, and to be great, and, and, you know, you guys have, have all been elite and been, you know, the best in the league at, at one point in time. There's just a certain mentality that, that is necessary to, to, to have that kind of, um, you know, to be at that level. And for him to have that for 20 years, you talked about why did he leave? I mean, he, he, he was ready to move on. You know, he's ready to do something different. And, um, and the thing that's sad is that with all his accomplishments, those values, those, that discipline, he was carrying over into other aspects of his life. You know, coach and the academy and as a parent and Academy Award and, and, and story, you know, telling stories. And, and so there was so much more greatness that I, I believe he was destined for. And, um, you know, but just just an amazing competitor, um, you know, one of the best. And I'm just glad we got to celebrate him his last year when he announced his retirement. And he was around to sort of, you know, share and enjoy the love that the basketball community afford, you know, showed him. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, it happens after somebody passes away. But, you know, we, we got a chance to, to love on him when he was still alive and let him know just what he meant to all of us in the basketball world. He talked often, Candace did Kobe, about an important word, and that's inspire, mm -hmm. right? And you could do it different ways. You could do it by showing in your actions, which I think he did, because we all would wish and we've all made mistakes that whether it's us or people around us, that you challenge yourself to be better for it. And he did. You could tell to be a better person and father. But in the last couple of weeks, we lose in both the late commissioner and in Kobe, two people who challenge people to forget what happened 40, 50 years ago and remember in the here and now where women's basketball was and where it was going. And both of you, obviously, a huge part of that in different ways. How about the inspiration for your daughter because of that that Kobe was? Well, we had an opportunity to go work out with Kobe a couple times. And I remember the, the question that I wanted to ask him the most that I struggle with was, you know, making shots. Everybody can make shots when you're having a great night. But what gives you... The, the audacity to keep shooting when you're missing. <laughs> right. That's what I just right. wanted to ask Kobe because there would be nights where I most respected him going six for 21 and then hitting the game winner. Right. And he said, 
I've practiced that shot too much not to make the next one. And that stuck with me. I mean, every drill, it was perfection. Well, you, you, got, you got to tell the story about what he said to you when, when, when he saw you and he, he pointed to his daughter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were in Beijing. Gigi was two at the time. And I walk in, you know, my mom's with me, and I'm like, hey, this is my mom. Kobe's like, hey, this is my wife. This, these are my two daughters. And he looks at me, he's like, she's going to beat all your records one day. <laughs> Gigi was two years old, didn't even pick up the basketball yet. But that's who Kobe was, and she inherited that on us. And it's the same guy in mentality when you watch the video when he had that horrific injury that said, oh, no, I will be back. Yeah. And just wait. Unfortunately, we now sit with what happened yesterday.